nice to have you join us on the cafe. Chef Mark and Stuart Rogan will be showing us how to create that barbecue eye fillet with namjin, coriander, mint and toasted rice very soon. Doesn't that sound delicious? Now though, let's talk nagging. How many times have you caught yourself saying to your kids, if I have to tell you one more time, well, today on The Coffee Group, we're discussing nagging. Welcome back, Jenny Howell from The Parenting Place. And for the first time, wellness advocate, Amanda Morell. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Let's Thank start with you, Amanda, because nagging, when I read this, when I was reading the notes for this, I'd actually just asked my child four times to do something, <laughs> and he hadn't put his uniform in the wash for school yet. Um, having to ask over and over, that really does raise our stress levels, doesn't it? Incredibly so. And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So I think with parenting, you have to give that yourself that reality check. If you're perpetually doing the same um, reminders in the same particular way in the same nagging voice, mm -hmm. not getting the result you want, you will gradually go insane and you will get very stressed out as a parent. So you have to kind of step back from that and look and question your own behaviors, I think, periodically as a parent. I think everyone is nodding. Yeah. Any parent is nodding at home now because we've all done it. We've all yeah. found ourselves becoming our mothers at some stage going, mm -hmm. I sound just like my mum did with me. Now, Jenny, how do we communicate effectively with our kids? I think we need to get in the same room as our kids. We do a lot of our communicating from one room to another <laughs> um, and hoping that the shout or the, the raised voice will do it. And children do amazing research and they just work out this is coming four times, five times. I'll wait till I hear that sound and then they might do something. But definitely be in the same room, eye contact. Sometimes you need to touch your child. You might, you know, touch their shoulder and say, what did I say? Um, and if we, if children know we will repeat it or we will nag and then do it ourselves, they're going to switch off. And we do tend to do that, don't we? We nag, they don't do it. We stomp around going, I'll do it then. Yeah. And nothing really gets satisfied through that. So Amanda, how do we motivate our kids then uh, so that they do what we want them to do when we need them to do it. You know, just skipping back for a second, I think to expect your kid to do something the way you want them to do the first time is a bit, you're gonna set yourself up for disappointment. Oh, okay. So I think you need to A, judge every kid differently because they're all different if you have multiples. Um, so be innovative in your um, interactions with your children. Maybe do something differently, again, so you don't have that same sort of insane, stressful result. Mm. Um, I would uh, encourage people to incentivize because that works incredibly well, regardless of what age your child is, a little so incentive. What sort know? of incentives would you use? Oh, well, you know, if you help me with the dishes, for example, then you get a little bit of time. Everybody loves the time on their device or whatever that reward is for your child. I'm not saying you do it all the time, but uh, I think adults and children are incredibly incentivized. And the other thing, Jenny mentioned it too, is to involve. For example, you know, some tasks for all of us adults or children are particularly mundane or boring. So if you can try to engage, you know, your child, if you're not know, putting dishes away or drying them, and then that's actually extra bo bonus bonding mm. time with your child and you're not in isolation so much, because I think underlying a lot of the stress in our busy modern lives, is just operating in a vacuum sometimes these days. So coming together as a family and, and being more interactive, I think will go a long way. Yeah, those yeah. are some very good tips right there, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, because a, a lot of time is spent yelling from room to room mm -hmm. and uh, wanting things done quickly because we're always in a rush these days, aren't we? As mm -hmm. parents, we need to slow it down. So Jenny, any tips to help parents to you, that you can think of to get out of the habit of nagging? Yeah, I think we have got to um, uh, look at the address of control. We often want things done our way. And so sometimes you've got to let a ball drop, Maybe Maybe your child's not going to wear a clean uniform. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, uh, and you're going to let that happen and just be comfortable with it as well. And I see lots of families using a chart where, especially when they're young, and it's pictures of what, what's required in the morning to get out the door. And instead of saying, have you done, you might say, where are you up to? And you know, the third picture is of, of them making the bed or packing something in the lunchbox. Um, and then you're stopping the same old, often we use our voice too much and we can use um, yeah, a different avenue to access their brain. Excellent. Some really great parenting advice from our coffee group. Amanda and Jenny, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for coming in.